Well, welcome to this tutorial, which is going to take a quick look at subdivision surface modeling in Houdini. And the reason I'm covering this now is because there are some similarities in the workflow to the workflow for symmetrical modeling that I covered in a recent uh, video. So let me just start by demonstrating the two ways in which you can render an object using subdivision surface modeling. And I'm going to just start with something very simple which is a box. And I'm going to change this so that we're looking at flat wire shaded. And the first way that we can render this object using subdivision surfaces is to go inside a geometry object and add a subdivide node to the end of our network. And we can see straight away uh, that this has increased the number of polygons in our model but also smoothed all of those edges and we can see that I can increase the number of divisions so that uh, we get almost a smooth surface here and let's just have a quick look at that when it's rendered and we can see that looks pretty much like a smooth surface when it's rendered so let me just get rid of that and demonstrate the second way in which we can model uh, and render a subdivision surface. And that is using a control here at the scene level on our geometry object. If we go onto the render tab here and onto the geometry sub tab, we can see that there's a little tick box here, render polygons as subdivision. So we select that. And then when I render, we can see that we get pretty much the same result. So what's the advantage of using one or other method? Well, the first thing I should say is that you can actually combine uh, the methods. Uh, we could put a subdivision on here, which sub subdivides by a couple of levels, and also use rendering polygons as subdivision in Mantra. Now, the difference between the two is that uh, when you do your subdivision here uh, in the geometry object, all of those polygons that you create are going to be exported to the renderer. And if you use a very large subdivision level, that could be an awful lot of detail that you're passing to the renderer. When you use uh, this uh, tick box here, what's happening is that this just passes an instruction to the renderer to take this polygonal object and then subdivide it an infinite number of times and render the result. So that's much lighter. It leaves all of the work to the renderer. And the other advantage of this is that it renders an infinitely smooth subdivision surface. So you can't quite replicate that using the subdivide node because you would have to put the the, the number of subdivisions up to an infinite number, whereas this subdivides so that the surface becomes perfectly smooth. There are, however, some advantages to using the geometry node here. One of which is it's slightly more stable. Uh, in other words, uh, it can deal with some situations uh, which the mantra subdivision sometimes uh, doesn't work with. So sometimes in Mantra, if the object is too complex, you'll get gaps in your subdivision, and you can correct those by inserting a subdivide node. The second thing you can do uh, with this node is to introduce creasing uh, automatically as part of the subdivision process. And let's uh, do that using uh, this box here, override crease weight attribute. I'm going to talk a bit more about crease weights in a second. But uh, this has a crease weight of zero at the moment. That means there's no creasing. Let me introduce a few more subdivision levels. And let me start increasing the crease weight. And we can see as the crease weight increases up to near the number of subdivisions. So in this case, we're at three subdivisions. So if my crease weight is greater than three, we're getting perfectly angular edges here. If my crease weight is less than three, we're getting smoothed edges. 
and if we increase weight to zero, those edges become completely smooth. So uh, let me put this up to say five. If I then increase this subdivision level, you can see that as we get above five, uh, and this in fact is still subdividing the surface, I've, I've put this up too high. Let's escape out of that. Uh, let's get back to four. So at level of four, in fact, let me put this back to four. At level of four, we're getting perfectly straight edges here. If I go up to a level of five, we can see that we start to get rounded edges. So that's the link between the crease weight and the depth. And I'll come back to crease weight in a second. But first, I want to demonstrate how to model using subdivision surfaces. So let's assume that uh, we want to use this cube as the basis for a model that we're going to uh, create a subdivision surface from. So first of all, let me uh, get rid of this crease weight. And let me just subdivide it three times to, to give it a bit of smoothness. And the problem we've got is that we want to model using this low uh, resolution, this low polygon count model. And we probably also want to visualize what our subdivision surface is going to look like at the end of that process. Uh, and we could do that using the same technique that we used for the symmetrical modeling, uh, which is I'm going to actually insert a transform node into here. And I'm then going to zoom out a bit. And I'm going to use the transform node to move my box over to here. So you'll recall that if I template this node here, it will allow me to visualize it while I'm actually still working on this box node here. So, for example, let's add some edge loops here. And then let's select the top surface and let's poly extrude it. Oops. Let's poly extrude it. There we go. And we can see what the result looks like here. So you can happily model away and view the results at the same time using this technique. And when you come to render, of course, all you need to do is either disable these two nodes, like so, or you can simply stick, uh, as we've done here, the render and display flags on this node. And just to prove uh, that that is going to render correctly, we can have a look at the render view there. And that is looking very like uh, this object here. So I promised to come back to this issue of creasing. And creasing is a way to tell uh, Mantra to render an edge as sharp rather than smooth when subdividing. Uh, and by the way, I should have said earlier on that the reason this is rendering correctly, even though I've taken the render flag off the subdivide node, is of course that here on the render tab we've got render as subdivision enabled. So let's have a look at how to introduce sharp creases. And there are two ways that you can introduce sharp creases. Uh, let me just demonstrate uh, the first one now. Uh, let me select some edges. Hopefully select some loops around here. Select all the way around this top. So we've got all of those edges selected there. And I'm going to poly bevel these edges like so and we can see here that this is leading to a sharper edge at the top of the subdivided object let me just disable this and we can see that's quite a smooth shoulder and then enable it and we can see it's become sharper so by adding additional geometry here we can affect the sharpness of these corners. And indeed, the size of this bevel is relevant. So I can actually make it an absolute bevel. 
and make it really very small. And we can see then uh, that it's producing pretty sharp edge there. So that's one way to create sharp edges. And the advantage of this method of creating sharp measures, uh, edges is that in general you can export uh, this base model to another uh, program and it will subdivide in more or less uh, the same way because you've just got geometry here, you're not adding any special attributes to create this effect. The disadvantage of using polybeveling is that it makes your model more heavy, of course, there are more polygons, and also in some tricky situations uh, this will create problems with the smoothness of your subdivision surface. If you've got a very complicated edge that you're trying to bevel, you may get uh, some artifacts. And this property that when you add geometry you affect uh, the smoothness of the subdivision surface has its disadvantages as well. And let me just demonstrate this uh, by adding some edge loops here around uh, maybe this edge and this edge here and we can see that what that's done is affect uh, the smoothness of those edges. Now we may want to add that geometry for some completely other reason than changing the shape of our subdivision surface but by adding geometry we're affecting the nature of our subdivision surface and if I were to for example just split this here even like so. Let's try that. Uh, what we would probably find, and we can see it there, is we're affecting that surface. We've got many more polygons now than we would otherwise have, and I suspect if we render it, you can just see there's a bit of an artifact there. Uh, you, you may not be able to see that on the video, but uh, in fact there's a, there's a little bit of an artifact just there. So it can be a disadvantage to uh, use this method to affect the smoothness of the edges. Let me just delete those poly splits and also delete the poly bevel. So now we're back uh, where we started and I want to show you the other method for sharpening uh, the corners of our subdivision surface. And that other method uh, involves using a crease attribute. And this is just an attribute that exists on the points, I think it is, of our geometry. And the best way to apply it is to use a crease node. So let me select those edges again. like so. And with them selected and my cursor in the 3D view, I'm going to tab and press crease. And we can see that this produces a group of those edges and it allows us to affect the crease attribute. Now you can either replace the existing crease attribute or you can add to it. Uh, usually I want to set, set the crease attribute and let's set it to a value, say, of 4, and then see how that renders. So we can see that that's now rendering with a sharpish edge all the way around. Let me bypass the crease, and we can see that reverts to a smooth subdivision. Enable it, and we get uh, the crease like this. Now, if you... Uh, let's have a look at the details view and see where that attribute is being stored. Uh, I think it is at the vertex level. There we are. So we've got a crease weight attribute on each of our vertices. Most of the time it's zero, but on those vertices which are part of that edge, uh, we're getting a crease attribute of four. And as I mentioned earlier, the, the stronger the crease attribute, uh, the sharper the edge will be. So let me just demonstrate that by selecting again this edge around the top of here. And 
let's again increase that and let's give this just a, a value of one so that's going to produce a smoother edge and if we have a look at our render we can see that that doesn't have a very sharp edge at the top there if I increase this we can see that that starts to become sharper and if I get to 10 which is the maximum it's pretty much completely sharp So let's uh, finally talk about a problem that you can encounter with subdivisions. Uh, let me demonstrate this by laying down a cylinder, I think. So let me just lay down a tube and I'm going to make it a polygonal tube, of course, because polygons only work with, or, or subdivision surfaces only work with polygons. And let's give it end caps, like so. And we might think that if we subdivide it, uh, then uh, we would get uh, a, a nice smooth cylinder. Well, we are getting a nice smooth cylinder around the outside here, but we can see that the, there's something weird going on at the top here. And the reason there's something weird going on is because, in fact, with a tube, the polygons on the top and the bottom are not fused together with the polygons at the sides. So if I have a look at this, let's put the display flag here and let me show point numbers. And we can probably just see that around here there are two point numbers sort of overlapping with each other. That's, the, that's because these are not fused together. So if I add a fuse node, like so, uh, we'll see that that is now perhaps looking a bit more uh, like we expected. Uh, of course, part of the problem we've got is that it's subdividing and smoothing everything equally. So let me go back to here and let me now select those edges at the top and the bottom. Let me do that again. Right, that's done that. And let's crease those. And again, give it a crease value, something quite high. And what we should then see here, yeah, is that we're getting something that looks much more like what we expected. We can see uh, however, the, this patch on the top, this, this top of the cylinder, has a rather odd pattern. And that can cause us problems. Let's just have a quick look at the render view. Yep, we can see uh, that this is creating some rather odd uh, shading around the edge here. Uh, and that's true even if I render this as a subdivision surface. Well, it's, it's less obvious there, but sometimes these complicated bits of geometry can create problems for subdivision. So in general, you want to try and ensure that you're using quads. Uh, that's to say, uh, four-sided polygons. And here, obviously, we've got, uh, what is it, a six or eight, well, ten-sided, I think it is. Uh, polygon, and that's part of what's causing the trouble. Uh, and I can demonstrate uh, this also using a different type of model. So I'll pause the video for a second and model something which will cause us some problems. So the object I've modeled now is just this sort of pencil shaped object, and all I've done is uh, created a curve and then revolved it round an axis, and then I've enabled uh, rendering polygons as subdivision here. Let's have a look at what it looks like when it's rendered. And we can see rather than having a sort of smooth top, it's, it's got this point. And the reason it's got this point is because we have all of these edges meeting at a single point. And that's known in uh, 3D circles as a pole. Uh, and perhaps we don't want that 
pole, perhaps we want this uh, thing here to be smooth. Uh, well, one way uh, around it uh, is to ensure that your uh, number of sides that are coming into the pole is the same as uh, the number of uh, points that you can produce on a grid. So let me lay down a grid. And in this case, I'm going to make it a two, sorry, three rows by three sides. And I'm going to obviously reduce the size drastically. And I'm going to move it up like so. And then I'm going to merge this in. Like so. And I'm going to delete all of those surfaces that were at the top of our grid. And what I should find is I should have the same number of points. Let me just check. That's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points. So I can probably do a poly knit like so. to knit these all together like so and that should produce there we are a top to our cylinder and that's no longer got a pole, so what we should find, a hut, but we need to ensure that it is fused, I think. Maybe that's the issue. No, that's, that's not the issue. So the issue is probably to do with the normals. So let's have a look at the normals. And we can see, yes, the, the normals on this top part are inverted from the normals underneath so let me just select the top and tap reverse and that should ensure that all the normals are now facing in the same direction and we should find there we are uh, that this now looks much more like we would expect, which is a top that is uh, smoother. And of course we can uh, reduce the size of these, like so, and produce a different effect. So that's looking pretty similar to the original shape, but without getting that pointy pole. So by eliminating poles, you can reduce uh, artifacts in subdivision surfaces. Uh, but also, of course, you are sometimes going to need to use poles where you've got different uh, surfaces joining, um, where you've got edge loops needing to be eliminated. And you always want to try and hide those poles on the back side of your model or in somewhere where they're not going to be obvious because they're never going to render well as subdivision services. So anyway, I hope that's been a, a useful, very quick introdu introduction to subdivision services in Houdini.